Welcome ladies and gentlemen, let's talk Ahsoka, episode 7. Let's review this, let's review this as one singular episode, uh, an entity detached from the other episodes, and then we'll also review it as, you know, we're kind of nearing the end. I guess that's a, a good way of doing this. Look, the quality of this show has ebbed and flowed. I've, not, I've never out and out hated it. I've been bored at times, which is, I think, perhaps some of the worst you can be uh, in a form of entertainment. But I've not out and out hated it. It's just ebbed and flowed in quality. And the one through line uh, of any positivity has always been Ray Stevenson. Absolutely brilliant performance and a true loss to uh, the acting world, I think, quite frankly. Because he's great and he's really good in this. Again, this is an episode where he gets uh, quite a high amount of screen time. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. And I enjoy his performance. He is the standout. So what happens? As a quick recap, what happens in this episode? Ahsoka comes out of hyperspace in the whales. Uh, and is obviously met with a, a giant minefield. Comes back down to the planet after you know Thrawn essentially flushes her out so we see some of Thrawn's statistical or tactical should I say capabilities Ezra is with Sabine Sabine still hasn't told Ezra that their time is ticking and they may never be able to get home they get set upon by uh, Shin Balin's apprentice and the raiders that they teamed up with I guess I guess that's what you can call it uh, and that's essentially it you know Ahsoka meets up with Sabine again uh, that is the episode it's like 45 minutes long uh, it's quite a long episode but you know some stuff happens but some stuff doesn't but let's get into you know bits and pieces that I enjoyed that's just our, our brief recap anyway so we see some of Thrawn's tactical capabilities uh, in this episode as I say you know when Ahsoka comes out of hyperspace although side note she's training lightsaber duels at the very start form function whatever with a, a hologram of anakin skywalker so a bit member berries i do take some umbrage with ahsoka's uh sword capabilities the weird backhanded stance that you take with lightsabers where you hold them sort of reverse grip whatever you want to call it it just looks weak, you know. It, it it genuinely just looks weak, like you're not going to be able to block anything, and it just looks a bit pathetic, right? I, I you know, you're not going to convince me that anyone other than a massively jacked dude is going to be able to wield a sword in that fashion and be effective. So whatever. But anyway, they come out of hyperspace, and oh, there's a giant minefield. So they try to get out, and then the whales bugger off super super quick. There you go. Cool. Whatever. But like I say, this gives us uh, an introduction to Thrawn's tactical abilities and how he's uh, essentially one step ahead. And he is, in this episode, he is one step ahead because he, he lies the minefield, you know, he puts the minefield down. Elsbeth releases her fighter pilots to go and chase Ahsoka. He says, call them off. They again go into hiding. He gets the uh, great mothers to come and find her. Uh, and then he flushes them out again uh, and leads them down to the planet, essentially. So I liked all of that stuff. I thought that was quite cool. You know, you do see the tactical elements. And we see the tactical elements again later in the episode when Thrawn sends uh, a bunch of the stormtroopers, aka night troopers, to go and attack Ahsoka, Sabine, uh, and Ezra. So they get mowed down, they get killed, even though there's rumours that they're, un they're the undead, so I guess the undead can die. So I, I don't personally like that. I know that there'll be many explanations for that, but I don't personally like that. I think that's kind of just a bit shit, to be honest. Um, but when he calls them back, Elsbeth goes, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, we just press on. He goes, no, this is an acceptable loss. You know, we're not losing because... Uh, what this has afforded us is time. We've now almost loaded all the cargo on. So we can basically get going now. So I liked that. It was that tactical, you know, the Thrawn being a great tactician, a great leader, attempting to be one step ahead. 
that definitely does display that. Uh, and then prior to that, anyway, Ahsoka comes down and has a fight with Balin. This whole interaction with Balin, Balin is genuinely the most compelling character in all of this. But I feel like with one episode left, he's definitely going to be sidelined. And then the actor's dead as well. So, you know, I think this is... I, th I, I don't know whether this is going to be satisfying or not for what, you know, a lot of people are wanting from this character. You know, character. But they've done such a good job with Balin. Or Ray has done such a good job with Balin. I do have a, a theory that he's probably just been left to his own devices. And that's why he is so good. So anyway, Ahsoka comes down, they have, a, they have a big fight, but prior to that, Balin says to his apprentice, we're going to part ways now, basically, one last uh, lesson, you know, the sort of uh, rush to victory guarantees failure or something like that, which I thought was really cool. But he's obviously going off into the wilderness because he wants to find this higher power. And I, I, and I think that's great, like I'm, you know... <laughs> I can't help but wonder where it's going to lead, how it's going to tie, because obviously they are going to tie all of this to the sequel trilogy. I wonder if he's going to find Snoke, uh, even though that was put as like some kind of offshoot clone body thing. Um, but I wonder if there was an original Snoke, you know, like, a, like an original creature, an alien, that um, would be able to house... Um, you know the uh, the emperor's spirit basically I, I don't know it's all random pie in the sky thoughts and theories but that's the only compelling thing for me that is the only reason i'm continuing to watch the show is because of ray's performance the way he stands to fight with the lightsabers the way he's calm collected i love it i think you know i think that's great i really really do and then ezra ezra doesn't want to take any lightsabers, doesn't want to take any blasters, and he's using the Force. The Force is his weapon, and he, uh, you know, he does sort of run around doing Force pushes and, I don't know, some weird martial arts with the Force. Didn't like that. I thought that was pretty shit, to be fair. Um, and that, that, was, that was honestly basically it. There wasn't a whole lot else going on. Uh, I, I do think, like I say, the night troopers, if they are the undead, them just randomly dying. There's no differentiation between them being the living, dead, and the dead. They just, you know, die again. I can't say I think that's really crappy. Listen, that's not my cup of tea. Thrawn. I wish they'd fleshed him out a little bit more uh, this time. You know, uh, give us more, essentially. You've, you've built him up. I want to see more. We see some of his tactical abilities, but give us more. Uh, there was the, I guess, the trial, the court-martial of uh, Hera Syndulla at the start. And obviously the Asian senator, he's very clearly evil. I mean, that's you've telegraphed that bloody mile away. He's very clearly evil. You could have done it a bit, you know, with a bit more nuance. The performances were amateurish. The acting is terrible. Didn't like that at all really bad and then c3po just waddles in uh, and speaks on behalf of leia organa obviously that they, they, they can't bring back leia well they, they probably can bring it bring back carrie fisher they probably have the rights but they didn't and i've got to say i think that's a good a good choice i think a lot of people on twitter are going why didn't they bring back leia do you really want to see disney raise the dead reanimate carrie fisher in that way I, just, I think it would look fucking dog shit. So I'm very glad they didn't, quite frankly. But there you go. My overall review is... Meh, at this point in time. And, you know, as an episode, it, it's fine. It's probably a 5 out of 10. You know, maybe pushing on a 6 because of Ray's performance. That's my honest opinion. We are one episode away from the very end. If they don't crank out like an hour, 20 minute episode... And it's like, because they do have a habit of doing this, giving really short episodes for the end. I just don't think this is going to be a satisfying conclusion at all. And Balin, the whole story about Balin has got to go somewhere for this to be satisfying. For me, anyway. I know other people will not care. But for me, I want to know what his deal is. I want to know what he's trying to find. And I want to know uh, how he, you know, he's obviously going to pass away. But how does it all relate? Where's it going? So, there you go. There's my review. I think the final episode is going to be a bit poo. But we will see. 
Let me know your thoughts down below. Hit subscribe if you're new here, guys. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye now.